Happy New Year, everybody. Today I'm going to make a quick video regarding return statements. Now that sounds pretty boring, I assume, but it's actually pretty cool. So it starts out being pretty basic. I just have a simple HTML page and it's requiring a single JavaScript uh, file. And right now it's just printing to the console, hello world. So I don't have anything fancy set up. And so <clears throat> if you're new to JavaScript, you've probably seen return statements, but you might not understand exactly what you can use them for. Uh, it confused me for a while, even though I could repeat the definition of a return statement, I didn't really know how to use it. So let's build up one step at a time. So let's just make a function that will return a name. All right, so if I say return and then my name, if I call that function name, well, actually, I'll show you like this first. So if I just console log the variable name, what we'll get in the console once that refreshes is the actual function itself. But if I execute that function, then I'll get its return value. Save that. When this refreshes, instead of getting the whole function itself, what I'll get is the return value, which is the name that I put here. But you can do a bit more than just return a specific value. You can, for example, pass in an argument. Let's say, actually to make it obvious, let's say Kristen, name up here, and I can then return the name, and I'll still get the return value out of it, except this time we're passing in a return value. So now we get Kristen. And if I were to do this again with a different name, then we'd get two outputs, and whatever name I passed in would be the return value. Now you can also do things like, say, add two. We'll change this to be a number, and I'll say number plus two. All right, so if I pass in seven, I'll expect the return value to be nine. So once that refreshes, oh, name is not a function. Oh, it's because I got to change that to add two. And we get nine. And again, that's because the function add two has a return value. And when you execute that function, you receive its return value uh, as the as the replacement for this entire uh, function call here. But we can actually do things that are a lot more interesting than that. So let's instead of add to say, uh, let's just go return function. And so this is just going to be a function that returns a function. Let's say return Nathan. Oops. And we're going to have to close that. There we go. All right, so now we have a function called return function that's going to return a function that returns the string Nathan. So we get rid of this. And we instead, if we console log return function without calling it, or executing it, sorry, then what we'll get is the entire thing that I wrote out. So a function that returns a function that returns Nathan. But if we then execute that function, Save that. Now what we get is just the function that returns Nathan. Okay. Now if you're if you haven't seen this before, this might seem kind of weird, but you can then put a second set of parentheses after that. And what this will do is execute the return value of this first function. So in this case, we as we said, we're returning the function that returns Nathan. So now I'm going to execute that function that returns Nathan. And now we get Nathan. Okay, so that might just seem like a bit of a waste, but now let's pass in Nathan. We'll say that this function is going to accept a parameter name, and we'll return 
name. Save that. And as we saw before, when this refreshes, again, it's Nathan. Let's instead change this to be a function that's going to do some addition for us. So it'll be number one plus number two. And if we say num2 there, and num1 up here, so this means that the first time that we call this function, we're going to pass it the first number, and the second time that we call the function, we're going to pass in the second number. Okay? So, we get rid of all of it. Actually, I'll, I'll show you first. So, here we go. Let's do 8 and 2. So again, I'm passing in 2, and then I'm passing in 8, and then we're adding those together. So I should expect 10. And we get 10. All right. Again, that seems kind of weird. Why wouldn't you just do this all in one function? Well, I'll show you. So in, if we instead, let's just change this to make it obvious. I'll call this add what. So if we say we make a new function called add three, and it's going to be equal to add what with three passed into it. That's the same as this here where we passed in two, but if we passed in three, all right, like that. So now we have a function called add three. Well, let's look at that in the console. Let's, if we go add three, save that. We're going to get a function that returns number one, uh, the first number plus the second number, and it's going to accept the second number parameter. So what that means is we can pass in a parameter to add three and that will be this second number here, okay? But we've already stored the number three in the function the first time we called it. So now we have a function that whatever we pass into it, it'll always add three because that's what we told it to add. So let's say 12 and now we would expect 15. Let's go back here and we get 15. So we can make a bunch of those. We could say const add 7 equals add what? Well, we're going to add 7. And then if we replace that with add 7, save, or at least try to save, there we go. And what we get is 19, which is 7, the first parameter we passed in and stored, and 12, the second parameter that we passed, or argument that we passed in, which was put in the return function. So just to be clear, I'll explain this one more time. Add what returns the second function. And so you can call add what and pass in a param or an argument and it will be stored in the parameter num. Okay, so we passed in three. And if we assign that return value, which is a function, to a new variable, this time we call it add three, then we've stored that entire return value into add three. So add three is now a function, and it has a stored value for num, which we said was three. So then when we execute add three, it will already know the value of num, which is 3, and it'll always be 3. And we can pass in another parameter, which is num2, and it will add it to the first num because that's what we told it to do. So this seems fairly basic, like why would you, why would you want to do that? Uh, but if we had a lot more logic than just adding one thing to another, then this can become a lot more interesting and a lot more useful. But if you understand how this works, then you can scale it really well uh, on your own because you'll actually know what's happening. Uh, this confused me at first, so I'm hoping that each step along the way made it a bit clearer. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.